If you follow the link all the way to either YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, then you may be thinking, geez, I may as well stay to the end to hear what Nick has to say. And I agree. So I'm going to stop this voiceover, roll the intro, sit back, relax, and enjoy the chat. Hello and how are you to all sports lovers out there? My name is Robbie Gillette, and welcome to conversation number 12 of the Keeping It Real with Robbie podcast, where we chat all things from the mental side of sports, to stories, laughs, and banter. Whether it's the old pigskin or the old leather ball, we've got you. Today I'm joined with Nick Groom in the Zoom room as he shares openly and honestly about his career thus far and the noise surrounding professional sports. I hope you guys enjoy and let me know what you guys think. How's it, Nick? <laughs> can you hear me? Hey, I can see you yeah. loud and clear. Hear you loud and clear. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How's sorry, it, Dad? But good, thanks, man. Yeah, and yours? No, I was chilled. I was chilled. <laughs> um, yeah. But you are round two uh, for the guys at home. You won't know this, but we tried this last night. And uh, yeah, technology, and we always say at home, like technology is never simple. But hey, we, we blessed to have technology that we can connect like this. But yeah, um, I'm excited to be chatting to my second favorite groom. Nick, admittedly, your, your dad has to take the cake there, you know. He, uh, he, shout out Mr. Groom. He's a legend. Uh, he, I'll never, he I'll never forget. Your... No, I'll never forget the story. Um, so in 2008, my first year at Ronagosh, I was in grade two. And my brother was playing in his under 10A cricket side. And my brother Shane, bless him, he got uh, he got sick or something stupid at Redham, um, like throwing up or whatever. And I was I was that brother that was always on the side of the field, you know. Um, so so I was the only one there. And um, your dad called me up. I think I fielded for like three balls or something stupid. But a week later, I was the Bosch boy of the week, and yeah, I, the fame kind of followed me from there. He launched my cricket career, and so I have him to thank for that. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah the, old, the old man's a good egg. Yeah, I know he is. But very in, lucky. But in all seriousness, shout out Mr. Groom, he's a legend. Um, <laughs> and yeah, Nick, I just want to uh, fly through a couple of the sides you played for. Um, so Western Province, five Curry Cup finals, two wins, the Stormers, Northampton Saints, the Lions, and currently with Edinburgh Rugby. Um, and I think it would be rude not to mention, and I'd probably get a lot of stick, uh, former Ronnebosch boys, or Ronnebosch boys, old boy, and... Uh, yeah, UCT Ike Tigers alumni, which is why I'm in my my, my UCT colors. Um, so yeah, shot for joining me in the Zoom room. <laughs> no worries. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So Nick, we were lots to chat about. Um, but yeah, I think you've just moved into a new place. Your father now, congrats. Uh, but could you take us through your journey, uh, the Nick Groom journey? Um, not the we'll touch on the highs and the lows later but just kind of the journey you've you've been on yeah sure so um uh yeah i finished school at Rondebosch and i decided i was going to um try and make it as a professional rugby player so um went to the uh, western province institute i remember i initially applied and got blocked <laughs> <laughs> and then um then like the next day they were like no come come join us we've got space for you whatever so you got there did a year there um which was which was tough but really good and then um after that i went to uct um started studying i didn't i didn't get a contract out of school which was kind of the goal of the whole thing, the whole year so um that didn't really work out but anyway i started studying at varsity um so studying organizational psychology um which was cool and then playing rugby for the Aki tigers which was mm. which was epic and then from there i played that year in the varsity cup uh, we made it to the finals um and then we went i went on to play some league rugby and then i got called up to the province in the 21 training like the wider training squad um which was great and just sort of trained there ended up playing the whole year for the 21s we ended up winning that and on the back of that i got a contract to um, uh, to uh, play at Western Province full time, so that was amazing. Sure. I remember um, Rassi was still in charge there, so like he was he was very instrumental in my whole signing there, and he he, he was he he's pretty much you know got me into the under twenty one setup and signed me on, which was great. And played about six seasons there um, at. Western Province and the Stormers, which was amazing. Um, had some great success there and some some unbelievable times playing there. And then went to Northampton Saints for two seasons, um, which was 
which was which was amazing. Um, ended up uh, coming back to South Africa for about a season and a half at the Lions, um, and then shot back over here to Edinburgh, where I've been for the last season. Awesome. Um, yeah. Were you were you studying and playing pro rugby? Yeah. So Jeez, how, how did uh, you manage that? <laughs> not not very well um, i remember it was, it was yo it was tough like i could hardly go to lectures um on my off i had to schedule like my whole my off day which was normally a wednesday or a thursday was just nine to five had was just full of tuts um it's the worst part of varsity I, as well <laughs> was the only thing the only thing that kept me alive um and um yeah i was it was pretty much my, my life at varsity consisted of um, running off the training field in Belleville, uh, showering, driving to varsity, eating in the car, um, parking illegally, uh, and then um, <laughs> just running from tut to tut or to a test or to hand something in before a deadline. I don't know how I did it, honestly. I was very lucky in that I never had to, I never missed like a big exam because of a game or I'd never had, to, I've never been put in that situation somehow. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I have a lot to, um, to owe to the people who I studied with who helped me so much. <laughs> no, <it's>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but Joe, yeah. you mentioned that you left Northampton Saints. We chatted a bit about it last night. Can you, can you kind of share again, just why, why that came to, to an end? Yeah, so, I mean, moving to the Saints initially was a big deal for me. Um, uh, it was, a, at the time, you know, they were sort of, the, when I signed for them, they were the reigning champions of England, and it was a big club. And, you know, playing in, in Europe was something that I'd always sort of looked forward to one day. And the time came and um, just got married and moved over. And, just, and you know, we were going to make Northampton home for, for however long. Um, and got there, first season went really well. Um, I played probably some of my best rugby I've played, um, adjusted well to the new city and, and that sort of thing. But um, I think, you know, objectively speaking, I can maybe say that the, the time I arrived there, it was just a really tough time for the club. I think um, yeah. there, was, there was loads going on just in my second year. Um, you know, they were getting rid of people, getting rid of coaches. We had a new chairman, new CEO. Um, we had a new coach who was coming in at the end of that season. Like no one, it was a bit messy. No one really knew where they were. Um, guys, guys who had been there for, you know, dec like a decade, like play, like servants of the club were sort of left hanging on to the last minute and, it it just wasn't great and I, I found myself coming off contract in the second year and um you know after sort of having to deal with a new director and it just i ended up being one of a few guys who um just we didn't get a deal over the line in time and eventually got to the stage where you know i had to either say you know i've got to go or um i can't really wait any longer um, I think it happens a lot in in Europe, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. You just become kind of a, a victim of the circumstances of the club, which is a pretty natural thing. Um, mm. I guess it was just quite disappointing in a way as um, I, was, I was happy there uh, and, you know, I, you know, I was playing well and it's just like, it's just sports, I guess. It doesn't really work the way you want yeah. it to. Um, but at, at, the, at the time, um, uh, the Lions uh, got in touch and they they offered me sort of a chance to go there and um, yeah we made it work and it was it was a really a really experience that I'm truly grateful for playing there. Yeah. Um, when you say got in touch, what like how how does that all come about? Is it uh, through agents or or not, obviously it wouldn't be you directly, right? Yeah. So. It wouldn't be me, no. So I'm, I'm pretty much saying to my agent, listen, man, I don't think it's going to work here. Um, you know, we are training every day. You can pick up on, on these things. Yeah. And sometimes the writing's on the wall. You, you, you're doing the sums. You're going, well, no one's coming. Yeah. Not, not, I'm the only scrum off coming off contract. And, and you're basically in, 
you, you tell your agent what's going on. They're technically always looking for something for, for their players. And um, they would have, yeah, so my agent would have been in touch with the Lions and be like, listen, here's the situation. It looks like um, um, he might not be renewed. Uh, you know, would you, con are you interested? And then kind of things take off for them. Like mine was a quite, kind of a unique situation. I was, um, I, it had been a really tough year at Northampton. Just, we were losing all the time. We had such a good squad, but we just really weren't getting it together. We, we had changes all the time. No one knew if they were going to be there the next year or not. The coaches sort of were changing all the time. They were going at the end of the season. It was really just a, a quite a turbulent time. And I was actually considering um, taking a break from rugby. So oh, hectic. I, I, was, I was thinking like, you know, the season's going to end in June here. The only way I could realistically take some time off is if I didn't sign for anyone for about six months and I joined the Super Rugby team in November. So I was, before that, in, I had played a double season. So I'd gone, I played an entire Super Rugby, then oh, played then an you entire... Played, went into theirs, huh? Yeah, so I, I ended up playing like, um, I ended up playing 80 games in two seasons. <laughs> um, so I was like, just done. Pope, I, was, huh? I was like, and, and you know, you you sort of you you pair that with your uncertainty of your future. Um, I'm in another country. It was just really hectic, and I was just like, I got to a stage where I was like, I don't feel like playing anymore. Like, yeah. I, I I want I need a break. Like, I'll go do whatever. I'll go travel. I don't know what else. And yeah, and then I I, I spoke to the lines, and I I told them I was like, listen, man, like I'm no good to anyone right now. Um, I can't even think about playing rugby. Um, I'm I'm not keen. Like, yeah. Please, if if you would consider, or if you want to sign me, sign me in November, and I can prep for Super Rugby twenty uh, twenty eighteen. And um, they they kind of got in touch, and at the time, um, Ross Cronier had just got injured, and they were about to leave on tour, and. Um, they said, "Listen, please, like we we going overseas. Um, we got we got like young scrum halves. Would you consider coming early?" And I said, "Well, okay, I'm only going to come early then if I can get a a, 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 a decent break after a curry cup." Yeah. So, uh, and to to their credit, they were like spot on. You you can take the time. So, I just I, I went back early. I literally got to Johannesburg a week late, two weeks later. Well, a week later, I was on the plane. We were off to um, Australasia. And um, after the Curry Cup, I had it from about October to January off, which was probably the best thing I could have ever like, hoped for. It was, yeah. yeah, it was a time where I really just, I, I, you can't put a price on that, you know? Yeah. But it, I, I must say, like, we, so like my family and I watched you over the years quite closely and we saw you, like you went over and we didn't hear from you for a while or like see you play because it's not aired yet. And then all of a sudden you were in the Lions and we were like, sorry, what? <laughs> like, this is a cheat. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah. I, yeah, it's weird. I mean, I never ever saw myself playing for the Lions or living in Johannesburg, or whatever. Oh yeah, um, province boy through and through, you know, you gotta <laughs> stay true to your roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that that is true, but sometimes, you know, like the situations and opportunities just arise. Yeah. And um it's the type of type of gig where you've you've just got to be open to it. So yeah. um yeah, it, it worked out really well. Playing at the Lions is one of the most unique rugby experiences I've ever had. Um, That's interesting. The, the way they do things, the way they see the game, um, you know, it really, like, just it challenged me in so many good ways. It, like, it sort of forced me to unlearn a, a few things the way I saw the game and it just like, opened my mind a lot. Mm. I want to. I just want to go back to what you said about uh, things changing quite quickly in Europe. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff uh, in the media, so I don't know how true it is. Uh, but with um, guys and contracts and the RFU, have you guys at Edinburgh been like very chilled with that? Have you guys got it sorted, or were you not in that um, in that in the yeah. belly of the beast there? 
Yeah, so so the RFU's the the England Rugby Union. We 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 the, we part of the SRU, the Scottish Rugby Union. So, in a way, like during this mess, um, we have been. Um, I guess it's like to get some to, for them to make decisions. They've only got to consider two teams, like us in Glasgow. Yeah. So um, it makes things a bit easier. Uh, it's quite a tough. You know, all the teams in the Premiership, for example, are privately owned. So yeah. you know. Behind every, clubs, eh? behind every club is a business owner who, you know, has invested his, their own money in, in the success of their club. And now all of a sudden, you know, so, so the decision makers, the drivers of the decision makers are sort of invested quite heavily personally as, as yeah. owners of the, of the club. Whereas in Scotland, the two, the, two, um, the two clubs are owned by Scottish rugby. Okay. So I think decision making tends to be a, a bit a bit easier in that respect yeah because yeah, like the one yeah. one entity um i wonder yeah. how does it work in in south africa i actually don't even know is it yeah. so privately owned or um no not, not exactly so um it's it's very complicated uh I, I, as far as i know saru um so the you they, they have their own unions like western province rugby union owns Western Province and they majority shareholder in the Stormers. Um, yes, okay, okay. Yeah, so that's how it works. Okay. It's I, I'm not I'm not exactly too sure. I wouldn't quote me on that, but um, I think <laughs> it's quite. A, yeah, each each province has their own union, um, but it's it gets a bit complicated because there's obviously the Super Rugby team and now a, a Curry Cup team, or and then there's the amateur arm and a professional yeah. arm. And it gets a bit, yeah, it confuses me a bit. But, yeah, so that's how I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to look it up, but I just don't have that much time to, or yeah. not that much time, I just yeah. read, read enough. But, um, but yeah, but with our contracts, I mean, like most, I mean, we've, we've been cut, our salaries have been cut since, um, since May. Um, I mean, how, we, how do they get that right? Is it, is it like an I rule, rule the iron fist? Well, Technically, you've you've got to agree to it, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, the 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 union kind of goes, listen, guys, this is our financial position. Okay. Um, we quite lucky. We we there's a there's been a Scottish Players Association. So in South Africa, they have SAPA, South African Rugby Players Association. We have Rugby Players Scotland, which looks after the interests of the players, um, which has only been going for two years. Um, okay. so it's incredible that we had it set up before this all went down because they have been able to negotiate on our behalf and how it works is essentially we are the players. Um, so we are employees and, um, the, 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 the sort of executive side will decide on how they're going to cope with the, the, the circumstances and they would present us a thing. So that we basically got furloughed, um, the whole organization got furloughed. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. So we were at home, pretty much working on the furlough, or well, not working, but on the furlough scheme, and then we've just come back now. But basically, yeah, we we've signed we signed cuts up until September, and now we are in the process of negotiating sort of what's going to happen in the next couple of months after that. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. That's quite scary, actually, that it can happen just because of like this virus. That was a meme. I, yeah. I, I, I remember beginning of the year, I was like, cool, this coronavirus meme. And now it's just like sat everyone on their bums. <laughs> I know, man. It's hectic. Like some guys, I mean, everyone looks at rugby players and thinks, yeah, oh, they earn a lot of cash and all this stuff. Yeah. But, you know, you, your salary getting, is if it's getting cut by 25%, like your, your bond on your house stays the same. You know, yeah yeah exactly your, your exactly. repayments stay the same um so everything's sort of relevant um but it is yeah. it is a tough situation for rugby players you know you can't play forever um yeah. so yeah there's there's a lot of pressure to sort of maximize your earnings with the time you have mm. yeah that is true but nick just on a on a more on a, on a lighter note so I've, I've watched a few uh, interviews with you um and it, it's become clear which i really like i really admire is that you you have your perspective on the game is i think is pretty different to quite a lot of guys um in that you you've mentioned that you you want to play and gather as many experiences as possible um like 
is that is that the UCT Rondebosch flair coming through? Where where do you think that mentality comes from, and and how do you think one harnesses that to to maximize their career? I think I think it's a personal thing. A lot of the reason is why you play. Like for me, rugby has always been um, part of like part of a massive part of my life, absolutely. But it's never been my whole life. Yeah. It's never been something that I sort of live and die by. It's something that I, that I do, or sorry, that I love doing. Um, and, you know, funny, like my, my best memories and like the reason I enjoy like what goes, what rugby sort of presents in terms of opportunities to meet new people, yeah. travel to new places, have these amazing, play at these insane stadiums, stadiums against teams that I grew up watching when I was, when I was little. Be, um, yeah. That became like, you, you know, for for me, it was, I would I would sort of run into the field and be like, "This is sick. Like, <laughs> this is sick. You know, this is Twickenham. Like, this is a vibe." Um, is that what's going through your head as like when you run? Or you're like, "I'm not going to show it, but this is sick." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't get me same. wrong. I train hard. I work really hard. I yeah. I try and be the best. But I'm I'm competitive on the field. Uh, you know, I've I've, I wouldn't be where I am if I wasn't competitive and I didn't yeah. you know, go for it. Um, but, um, you know, you know, when you say, how do you harness that for your career? I'd say some people, they, they, they be all an end or dream is to represent their country or is to play. Some guys want to play for their club for their entire life and they want to retire there mm. or they want to, they want to play in a world cup. And, and that's cool. That's amazing. That's, that's, it's a personal thing. So, yeah, exactly. yeah. you know, my, my outlook is slightly different. Like I, the way I saw it was like having, having not been thrust into professional sports straight out of school or, you know, I, I, I was pretty much in the real world. I was, I was lucky enough to go to university. You know, I wasn't thinking about how many professional games I was going to play. I was thinking yeah. like how, you know, I was trying to figure out the jammy shuttle schedule, you know, I, Jeez, it's tough. Uh, <laughs> First that was, that's tough. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so I sort of had this break into rugby that was quite unique, I think, to most guys who who possibly been like like groomed into professional rugby from 15, 16. Um, so for me, it was just like, I know how fragile the journey can be. I know how quickly it can end. Like, I'm going to just strap in and, and just enjoy every experience. And for me, there's something really attractive about, you know, it's one of the few jobs where you can play it all over the world. Um, you know, there's not many jobs that can afford you an opportunity to experience a new lifestyle, a new culture, um, and uh, that was that was important to me. And it's it's something that I, you know, I on the on the, on the tough days when um, you're sort of missing home, you you know you you dip into the memory bank. Um, yeah, yeah. Of just like sort of the journey you've had, and it's it's a crazy one that I've been on so far. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, reflecting now on ten years, um, what are what are some of the best memories that you've that you you can reflect on now, and and maybe even some of the low points if you if you're willing to share. Um, but yeah, I think let's focus on the wins tonight. Uh, yeah, some of the best memories of, of the last ten years. Um, that's <laughs> it's probably an impossible question, but I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll try. I'll go with some of the obvious ones. Um, you know some of the big wins. I think winning winning with UCT um, at uh, against against Tikis in in 2011 um, with just the best bunch of bunch of boys was incredible. Um, so that Varsity Cup, I say that first Curry Cup win in Durban in 2012. Um, that was that's probably one of my best rugby memories ever. Yeah, just like man you look at that team you played against it was just that sharks team it was basically like a springbok pack it was it was really crazy um i remember it like we were playing against the beast bismarck and yanni and we had Jeez. Stephen kutsov scara and france mohaba who were all 21 Jeez. it was it was yeah and you know that it was just that game itself and how it happened and playing away from home and you know you won yeah incredible yeah Playing um, 
playing for the Barbarians was an incredible week of my life, one that I'll never forget. And just like it kind of epitomizes the, the, the Barbarians pretty much sum up why, you know, like that was like one of the pinnacles of my career. Like yeah. it was a real goal. It's kind of like, like the core values of rugby, I think, the Barbarians. Yes. No, you're right. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, um, being selected in the Springbok squad was, yeah. was something that, um, um, you know, was, yeah, like really, really cool. Being part of that inc- that Irish incoming tour. I'll never forget, I was on a party bus and my mate's bachelor's party. <laughs> like the news, <laughs> I was standing there and like the news came in and I was standing at the back of the bus and everyone just like started looking at me and I was like, what's going on? And they were just like, yeah, like charging <laughs> to the back of the bus. I still didn't even, I don't have my phone on me. It was, <laughs> that, was that was cool. Um, and then, I mean, you get, you get, I mean, there's been some great moments playing in some big derby games, like the, 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 the mid, uh, the West Midlands derby with, um, uh, oh, sorry, the, the East Midlands derby with, um, Northampton and Leicester, uh, that's like a real proper game. Um, I can imagine those, like the older guys as well, get well behind that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's just like two, off, like, it's two strongholds of uh, English Premiership, like traditional teams. Um, countless rugby tours, which have been amazing, Having being able to travel. Um, even recently, just playing in the... the um, the Glasgow Edinburgh eighteen seventy two rivalry game. Um, yeah. You know that's like you're playing pretty much a sold out Murrayfield for a club game, um, yeah. and also just to see, just to be a part of that, like how much it means to the guys or yeah. to the fans, and also the the regions. You know that's that's really cool. Mm. Um, I think I, I, you know, a big highlight for me is was playing at uh, at the playing against Clermont away at, at their home stadium and seeing just like how um how you know how crazy the the fans or how loud it was it was like everything yeah. that you imagined you know stadium like the people you feel like you're playing like you feel it feels like the fans are on top of you it is this is the most real experience um yeah. And yeah like some cool things you know um the game's given me a lot and I'm I'm really grateful for that. It's given me some incredible memories, like just some great, some great occasions. Uh, some like a, a highlight's got to be just the people I've met along the way. Like I've been so lucky, you know. I've played in 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 Cape Town, Johannesburg, in England, in Scotland. Um, that means like I've been coached by people from all over the world. I've played with yeah. people from countless countries. You know. I've been able to play with people from Samoa, um, Australia, Ireland, wherever. Um, they each bring something different. And to yeah. be able to have that experience is like one I'm extremely grateful for. Uh, the dream. Yeah, some, some of the lows, I guess, I guess the lows of sport, like from my side, it's, it's, it's tough to, you know, I've missed out on quite a bit. Like I've missed mates' weddings. I've missed um, some pretty important occasions. Okay. Um, I mean, it all comes with the, the, the package, I guess, but I mean, it's definitely, yeah. you don't get used to that, you know, like not being able to sort of be at my bed. I mean, I was best, best man at my best mate's wedding and I couldn't be there. Um, so I mean, the, those, those are the things. And obviously the obvious ones would be some of the tough losses, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Sure. I think the toughest game of rugby I've ever played was the 2015 final against the Lions. Um, yeah. that was it was just I, I still to this day what happened I, I, I genuinely believe I had an anxiety attack on the field wow. where I just could not breathe I could not I could not function I was almost I was, it wasn't even half time and I was kind of like asking to be subbed it was horrendous <laughs> jeez <laughs> yeah Yo, do you think that was the, the occasion or it's just is what it is yeah I don't think it was the occasion. I mean, it was, you, you played in uh, like yeah. finals before. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I still don't really know what it was. I don't know if I ate something weird or um, I just maybe I got like a knock in a really weird place, and it, I just could not. I could not like breathe. Um, I can't really explain it. 
uh, yeah, is, but that, that is it's luckily it's it's never happened again. <laughs> yeah, touch wood, <laughs> touch wood. Yeah. Um, anyway, I wonder. So you've played in uh, Europe and SA. What are some of the uh, the differences you've noticed, like in terms of playing style, uh, the volume of games you guys play, uh, e even media and fans? Like, what are the what are the differences between the two um, the two beasts there? Um. Yeah, so style of play, really different. I think that's got a lot to do with two things, the competition and the uh, conditions. So the competition, uh, let's take the Premiership, for example. There's a promotion relegation, uh, whoever Gee. comes last. That's cool. Um, so all of a sudden, you know, you get to a certain part of your season where you're either playing for top six, sorry, top four to, to make the playoffs in the Prem, top six to make Europe, or if you're at the bottom, you're playing to stay up in the league. I love that. So there's always, there's, there's always something on the line. So yeah. with that, you technically, the, you, you tend to play low risk rugby okay. a lot of the time. So, like so winning, becomes, winning becomes paramount. Yeah. So, so there's a higher premium on sort of on doing low risk stuff so that you don't, um, so that you don't, end up or either you fight for that scenario or you um so you, you end up making sure you're not getting relegated okay the super rugby doesn't have that yeah you know, i think maybe that's the, what super rugby misses i don't know i don't know super you know, rugby's been a bit like i'm not gonna lie it's been a bit i'm not you know i say like tough to watch just because it's it's like if you're not watching your side then for like for me now okay in, during coronavirus i've been watching the aotearoa league or whatever but if if the storm is on playing i'm i'm not really watching you know because it's like it doesn't mean mm. anything to me unless the stormers are like first you know what i'm saying so it's yeah. like a, maybe super rugby needs something like that yeah I, I don't know i mean in terms of the style you can see the super rugby is completely different yeah. um very likes all out attack and you know, um, the defense is different, the attack's different. Um, players are, are tend to like take more risks and you can see that. I think anyone can yeah. really see that. What people mainly can't see, I don't think, is the, is the volume. Um, so, you know, like if you play in the premiership and you, you're a foreign player, you've been signed to go to your club, like someone is like invested in you to come and make this team better pretty yeah, much and um, for your money there, huh? if you fit like you can play <laughs> and uh you it, it really adds up there's long long years oh yeah there's long seasons and they yeah. sort of roll into one because um, it's europe and and premiership huh? yeah europe premiership and there's a local like a, an lv cup sort of uh, uh league Jeez. which is so you know in south africa they do super rugby and then it goes into curry cup yeah over here they just go the seasons just run at the same time <laughs> so it'll be like five weeks premiership two weeks europe two weeks lv or anglo welsh cup or i think it's called the premier cup now then you back into the prem so technically you don't have a buy there's never a buy Jeez. the only way you're going to get a week off is if um what tends to happen is in the premier rugby cup squads will then use that as a window to rest their players but you know, if you're playing for a club that is is owned by an owner who wants to, you know, it's his club. Yeah. He's not going to really take too kindly to half no, his no. team not playing when they need to, because they'll get a good pay packet if they win any tournament, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it, you play a lot. You, you really do play a lot. I was really surprised by that when I moved over. Yeah. And I think, I mean, if you look at, I think there's only two guys that have played 100 caps for England. I'm, I'm, it, I know it's not more than five, which is maybe yeah. why, because of the workload in, in, for their clubs. Yeah, I've never actually thought about that. That's true. Wow. Um, but yeah, so I think my, my favorite part of the, the chats are always a game of who is and why. And I think this one's going to be pretty interesting just because it's been 10 years of rugby for you. But I think let's shoot with the, the, the first one is, who is the hard man? Who is the hard man? Yeah, he's like the hardest guy you've ever played against. It's hard to say play it against because not, I often don't have anything to do with the hard man. 
<laughs> but I can say some of the hardest men I've played with. Yes, Maybe exactly. that'll be a better, with, yeah. yeah. Um, some of the hardest men I've played with. So I would say uh, Reynard Arstadt, uh, yeah. Dwayne Vermeulen, Courtney Laws, um, uh, Pierce Guman. Okay. Um, there's some serious... Uh, um, I played with a guy at UCT called Mike Ledwidge who is one of the hardest men I've ever, I've ever come across. He, I've never seen someone throw their body around <laughs> like him. I um, always wonder what goes through those guys' minds. It's like, do you not want, do you not want your limbs in one piece? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm definitely missing a couple of names, but off the top yeah. of my head, yeah. See, that's a good shot. Pierce Schoeman has that, that Biltong um, business out in the UK, huh? He's just started it, yeah. So it's he's doing like Burevos and Biltong, and you should check shout it out. out. I mean, shout he's out doing really well. Yeah, That's it's called awesome. the Proper Pioneer. Proper Pioneer. Um, it's some, and honestly, it's the best Biltong I've had in in the UK. <laughs> Well, there you go. I think that's a good yeah. plug. That's a good plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great plug. Um, no, who is always late? Who is always late? Um, well, no, no one at my club right now. That wouldn't go down too well. But um, okay. uh, I don't know. We, there's, there's really strict rules on rugby players being late. Or, or, uh, or to, to like a social or something. If, um, if, if they can't come late to the club. Oh. You throw them under the bus. There's, yeah. a, there's a couple of guys who've missed the bus a few occasions. <laughs> um, Hugh Jones has missed a couple of buses um, <laughs> that I've been a part of. Uh, yeah, but I can't really think of late, late ones, eh? I think I think missing the bus is pretty bad though. Let's be honest. So I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. Hugh Jones missing the bus. <laughs> uh, who who is the hot stepper? Hot not, stepper. Not I've... not um not step in like at a social uh, first like dance floor. Guys who can't dance, dance in all that kind of stuff. Um. <laughs> right. I saw Brocky's up there. Um. Who else? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think back to my varsity days. Uh, oh, that'll be a good shot, huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, everyone there. <laughs> yeah, <fair laughs> you, didn't need a second, you didn't need a second invitation to. Um, no, I don't think anyone's good yeah. at dancing. <laughs> Sabella Sinatra is a great dancer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dylan Lades, he's got some moves. Um, Oh, well, yeah. I've always been jealous of guys who can dance because I really I can't like <laughs> but yeah, yeah. You can get enough yeah anyway it's, it's not um, who is on Orcs what's that the music yeah sure um, it it can vary at the lines that it was often Frank and Mustard was on the music really um, yeah sure um, uh, I'm trying to think of, where I am now, um, it varies a lot. Um, uh, the, 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 mu the taste of music is different though between the North and the South. In South Africa, it's either Afrikaans music so, yes, or, the, or, the, or the boys are playing like some hardcore, like I remember at the Lions, Marvin Ori just used to play Tupac all the time or there's some real hip hop and rap. And over here there's, there's a bit of a mix. There's like a there's a bit of an like a an old school rock fetish mixed with some dance <laughs> stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then and then last one quickly. Who who is the kit man's nightmare? The kit man's nightmare. Um, probably me. No. Okay, Nick. I must I must jump in there. I think I've asked this four times, and it was I think it was Chris Van Sale, Dimitri Kachikilis, yourself. And I think Skull Brits, and they've all said themselves. <laughs> they've all really? said themselves. So I'm, oh, I yeah. think I'm doing the wrong guys here. <laughs> I'm joking. So, yeah, I tell you why me because our kit man also looks after the balls, and I yeah. do the I do I do kicking afterwards. And sometimes some of my the balls go missing, or they're like in rows in the in the <laughs> stands, 
and they <laughs> get so bleak sometimes um, because either the balls in the road on a roof. I've had balls in the roof once. Jeez. And it just doesn't go. Every club I've been to, it just doesn't go down. Well. Yeah, I can imagine they're, they're not stoked with that. <laughs> no, no. Uh, um, and then, yeah, I think uh, I must touch on the Curry Cup. But a personal one for you, and I think the question on everyone's mind is your your relationship with Dimitri Kachikilis. Um, he said that he came on. And he said that you're the best nine he's ever played with. Um, how far do you guys go back? And then how, how pivotal do you think that 9-10 combo was in the, in, in the success of your campaign? Um, yeah, I think, you know, every now and then you get, you get uh, sports in the game. It's like, guys, you just really gel with. Yeah. And uh, that's what it was with me and Demi. I think we, we have sort of similar, we see the game in a similar way. Um, I think we've had similar sort of introductions to rugby. Uh, you yeah. know, we've, we've had to fight for a lot, a lot of sort of recognition and a lot, you know, against the odds kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, that that's where I think we go back. We go back to, I think the first time I met Demi properly was I was with under 21 squad and he got drafted in for a little bit. Um, he actually tells a bad story about me. Uh, so no. <laughs> when 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 he first arrived at um um at oh no the first time I met Demi was when <laughs> I was playing for the UCT second team or something against False Bay and I swapped swapped to fly half for the, like the last ten minutes and he was giving me this about oh you know oh, ten like you know well 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 yeah. <laughs> then the next time the next time I saw him was um at uh, at Western Province, the training centre, and where he was training with them twenty ones, and he claims I made some comment back to him there. But uh, yeah, yeah, yes, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then we ended up playing together. Um, uh, obviously, at, at Varsity, and we we won that Vodacom Cup. We won that uh, two Curry Cups. We won uh, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and another two finals, and um, yeah, I think like. You know, when you play scrum, scrum off and fly off, there's a, there's a lot expected of you. Um, um, you know, you, you have to make decisions all the time. You, you drive the team in a lot of respects. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of pressure on you. And, and, you know, when things don't go well or things don't go right, there's one place they're coming and that's for you to. And I think um, a lot of our career, you know, we... Um, the way we handled pressure was for, for us just to become tighter. And yeah. um, we, I mean, our back to me, I mean, Demi's the best kick of a rugby ball in the world. No, um, yeah, I think, I think everyone can, no I don't one, think anyone disagrees on that. Yeah. I mean, Jeez. his stats aside, like he, he can kick a ball accurately time and time again. It's, it's, it's actually quite special to watch. Yeah. And um, it's weird because everyone used to say I kick like Dimitri Kachikilis, but I don't know, I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot on our shoulders. And instead of you know, we, we used to find comfort in each other, and I think we fed off each other a lot. So okay. uh, I knew if I was on the field, I didn't care who I was playing, where we were, I don't know what, I didn't care what the odds were against us. Like if I was playing with Dimi, I knew it'd be all right, you know. And I think Jeez, there was a bit cool. of that back and forth. And we used to room together all the time. and it's, you know, it's a special relationship because I remember when Dimi left the Stormers played his last game. <laughs> I had no idea, but I was just a mess in the change room. I couldn't oh, even, no. like, go in the team huddle after the game. I was just, like, bawling my eyes out. And, like, Jeez. it kind of, that you know, reflecting on that, like, it was, yeah, kind of you know, that's, yeah. that's also a real low of professional rugby is that people move on and leave and, you know, your mates on the other side of the world and you've got to start a game with new people and, but yeah, you know, we just built up a really good uh, relationship, and you know, there's still someone that I talk to all the time. And you know, we we often, you know, when he was playing, we would share sort of some of our frustrations and yeah, and that sort of thing. And um, it kind of, he's always someone I can sort of, you know, bounce something off and, and vice versa. So I'm extremely lucky to have played with someone like Demi and. I honestly don't think things would have gone the way they have gone for me if it wasn't for him. So, yeah. Yes. Some awesome words. Um, 
But yeah, I think we're gonna wrap up soon. I just put that Q and A on my story, and I got. I think we'll start off with this one, and it says, "Is it true that you're the best baker at Edinburgh?" The best. <laughs> and it had two of those eye things. So I can assume it's maybe yeah. an inside joke, but I, I thought I'd ask so, you anyway. <laughs> so at Edinburgh, we we train at Murrayfield, and we got two change rooms, and um, we uh, uh, I was in the one change room. And I was like, right. Every Thursday is cake day. We having we having a vibe here. <laughs> One, on, someone every Thursday, someone use baking, and we started this thing. And it was amazing. We're rolling on Thursday, and there'll be treats, you know. So the one time I made milk tart, oh, um, and the boys loved it. The boys loved it. No, it was no. a it was a crowd favorite. So maybe that's where I got that title from. I got some help from my mother-in-law who was visiting at the time, but oh, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. You, you take, you take the credit, take the credit. The boys that have to know, you, the boys <laughs> that have to know. That's a great know. title. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great title. Um, and then what are your best memories, uh, in the Bosch Jersey at first side level? Wow. Um, I would say, um, one of my it's weird we didn't win this game but it was just the most inc one of the most incredible games of rugby um was my grade 11 playing against bishops at home last game of the season i'd i remember i'd been out um with the broken el or i dislocated my elbow and i was out for most of the year and kind of came back for that last game and bishops had a gun side they were just they were really good yeah um we we were we were okay we had had a sorry we had had a terrible year um <laughs> you know we had loads of injuries and it was just one of those years and we sort of made a bit of a rally towards the end and it was like all on the line for bishops and we lo we ended up losing in the last minute of the game but that was my first experience of like a a Ronda Wash Bishop Starby, yeah. you know, playing in the white on, on rugby a uh, in front of thousands and just the way the game played out, it was like, it was electric. Yeah. And then, um, I would say, you know, just playing first team, being able to captain Ronda Bosch, mm. going on tour to Argentina was so okay. good. Yo, um, and then, you know, we also we had some incredible wins in my in my in my first team year. You know, we beat Dale and, and Selborne, who were who were very very highly rated at that time. And you're old being, foe as well. Huh? Yeah, being yeah. an old alien, you know, that was quite cool. <laughs> we beat Born and Lumpo away. Um, you know, we beat Saxon Weinberg twice. Unfortunately, we didn't get over the line for 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 the Bishops games. But I mean, playing for on playing. And it's it's a shame the guys this year I'm guessing they're gonna miss out, but it's yeah. it's some of my purest, purest, most enjoyable rugby memories. Yeah. I think it is probably like the most pure form of the game. Um yeah. school rugby. I mean, look at I pip and love my under fourteen D side days. It was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um didn't no one watched, but it was awesome. It was awesome. Um well then what advice would you give to a young up and coming scrum off? Um, a young up and coming scrum off. So there's certain things about playing scrum off. I think there's no substitute for just time. So kicking and passing your core jobs, um, you know, those are skills you need to constantly just work on. Um, they aren't like overnight things. And from your first game to your last professional game, I would, I would, um, you know, they, they are things that before you can be anything but a scrum off, uh, you have to be good at that. So okay. that would be my first thing. Kicking and passing. Basics. Um, yeah, it was weird. In my whole school career, I think I kicked the ball about four times. <laughs> so I had to learn how to kick when I left school. Okay. And, and it's weird. If you don't have your core skills as a scrum off, like people won't look at you. They won't take you seriously. So there's there's one thing there's your craft and then i'd say like if you're a young professional um going into the professional league uh especially as a scrum off you know there's the these days there's just so much there's so much noise out there with with, with young rugby players and it's like mm -hmm. I, I would say do do everything you can to find out early who you're who your people are, who are the people you're going to listen to, um, you know, 
maybe it's a, 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 a school coach, a, a, a mentor, and like, I don't know, your mom. <laughs> and, you know, you, you get your circle because if you start making it and you start sort of finding your feet in the pro game, there's going to be, you're going to be compared to people all the time. You're going to, you know, everyone's going to want to give you advice. And you just, yeah. if you have a good foundation in who you are um, with art rugby and you've got people around you to constantly remind you of that, you'll be okay. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's advice. I mean, wow. did, did you ever um, struggle with like the noise? The noise with the yeah. um, young, or like, did, yeah, did you ever struggle with, with that noise? Yeah, I, 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 a lot um you you know uh these days it's it's there's comparison wherever you look yeah um like every i remember during the lockdown like every day there was like a top five scrum of 2007 or like the yeah. best the best team of like western province and like everything there is comf you you in a you know some stupid competition and if you buy into the stuff you know you're just going to stress yourself out yeah so what i tend to do is whenever i find myself getting like i don't know maybe i'm i'm starting to compare myself to other people i'm starting to like envy like oh, i wish i could do this or i need to do more of that like i just really just like kind of like rip it right back to the beginning um if I need to speak to people, those people that I trust and, um, kind of just, just keep something to keep me grounded again. You know, yeah. I, I, I tend to stay away from reading stuff online. And, um, I think in early on, you know, in my career, um, you know, it was like Twitter was quite new. Um, there wasn't even Instagram when I started playing pro, <laughs> like started, but, I mean, these are all things that I would just yeah. say, like, just create a lot of bad no noise, yeah, um, especially for young players. Like, if you're a young player playing professionally, I would, my advice would be, like, to just, you know, to stay away from, like, things like Twitter. Don't yeah. even go there. It's not only the bad stuff that will inevitably be, get said about you, but it's also, like, the praise that you don't want to be in a position in your career where you are reliant on affirmation yeah. from other people you know you're going to listen to the voices you trust in and that's who you need to listen to you know it's just as bad as you getting the wrong idea of your ability from people online just as bad as buying into all the praise as it is yeah. as you buying into all the negativity so you know I think, yeah i yeah. think you i think you're preaching for a lot of people there um like when for, for with me for instance you know like I, I started this thing and you, you always get like you'll get that the guys message you say like it's cool it's cool and you feel like on top of the world or whatever and then i i kind of had to realize okay like or i saw something or i listened to a podcast and it was like if, if you're gonna allow people to like dictate where your happiness is with with affirmation you know like someone saying like oh that was flipping cool like geez you're awesome but no one said that but i'm just saying like then they can take it away just as easily, which I, I was like, okay, that, that's actually, that's quite, quite. Accurate. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and most of the time you're the only one who really knows exactly. what kind of a job you're doing. Yeah. So you need to sort of just to define your version of success, what that yeah. looks like. And then, you know, that's that, like yeah. the rest is just noise. Yeah. Hmm. Totally. Um, I, that was, that's cool. I agree. Um, and then, do you regret never playing for the Nados? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I've really, I've played for the Nados. Well, then. <laughs> Symbolic question that. Yeah, that's played. A, cut that out. Cut that I've out. played. I've played. I've got two caps for the Nados. Two Nados. One. Two more than one me. off. One off the bench uh, in, in the in one of our annual Plet tours, which I actually don't even know if that happens anymore. Um, yeah. and then when I, funny enough, 20, 2010, um, I was, I wasn't selected to play for varsity in the, in the varsity cup game. I don't know who we were playing. So I was kind of like, I was in the varsity cup squad, but I wasn't playing that Monday. Yeah. So I was like, 
And the editors were like, we need a player. So I was like, I'm in. <laughs> I was like, forget yeah. it. I was, I was on the field, full Nader's gear, um, like playing against, I don't know who you're playing against, but while I'm playing, like all my teammates <laughs> that I was playing with the week before are walking into on the green mile behind me. <laughs> They're like, what's going on here? Uh, um, and that, I mean, yeah, it was, I think it, the next game was a semi final and I was, I was playing again for the first team. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, last one. Uh, how fast can you nick a pint? <laughs> Jeez, okay. Trick um, question. A, a lot <laughs> slower now than what I used to. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. I uh, got to, yeah. Couldn't practice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, um, I wouldn't say. I think I'm quite low on practice, to be fair. Yeah, fair enough. Um, in my day, though, I mean, yeah, <laughs> in I'd, my day, uh, yeah, in my day, I, I could, uh, I was, I was quite quick, but quick. <laughs> now I'm actually terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Nick, thanks so much for coming on. Like, I really appreciate your your patience with me uh, last night as well. Um, and you are certainly a chip off the old block. Uh, your dad, <laughs> your dad's a legend. Yeah, you're a legend. Yeah, so thanks so much for coming on. No, it's been a it's been a pleasure, man. It's been good to chat about some of the stuff, um, racking my memory a bit. Uh, and yeah, no, absolute pleasure anytime. Well done on 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 your podcast, man. Keep going, and um, I'm sure things will just get better and better. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. So thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on, Nick. I appreciate it.